Welcome back to the channel, dear friends and guests of Movie Magic, where we dive into the heart-pounding world of cinematic justice. Today we're stepping into the action-packed realm of The Equalizer. We will cover what you should know about The Equalizer, what happened in the first two parts of the movie. But before we dive into this world of action and retribution, make sure you're geared up, your adrenaline pumping, and that subscribe button smashed like you're taking down the bad guys. And now, let's start equalizing. Robert McCall, a former U.S. Marine and DIA officer, now lives a quiet life in Boston, where he works at a hardware store. He helps a colleague, Ralphie, train to become a security guard. Unable to sleep, he often spends late nights reading at an all-night diner. Over time, he has befriended Terry, a teenage prostitute trafficked by the Russian Mafia. The pair often talk about the books Robert has been reading. One evening, while taking a stroll, Terry shares that her real name is Alina and that she dreams of becoming a singer. Her pimp, Slavi, abruptly arrives, hits Alina, and forces her into the car. He hands a stunned Robert his business card and drives away. Alina is badly beaten and admitted to the ICU at a nearby hospital. Upon hearing the news, Robert travels there and learns from her friend Mandy, another prostitute, that Slavi is responsible. Robert finds Slavi and his men at their restaurant and offers to buy Alina's freedom, which Slavi bluntly refuses. Robert expertly kills the men and leaves. Unbeknownst to Robert, Slavi and his men were part of a much larger syndicate led by Russian oligarch Vladimir Pushkin. Teddy Renson, Pushkin's enforcer, arrives in Boston to investigate the attack. Aided by Boston PD detectives on Pushkin's payroll, Teddy canvasses rival gangs in the area, nearly beating Irish mob lieutenant Little John Looney to death to send a message. Robert continues exacting vigilante justice on criminals he encounters, blackmailing two corrupt police officers into returning racketeering money to Ralphie's mother and beating a gunman with a hammer after he robs the hardware store, taking a co-worker's heirloom ring from her mother. Teddy kills Mandy after learning that she concealed information about Robert and lied about her friendship with Alina. He visits Robert at his apartment, posing as a police detective, but Robert doesn't fall for the guys. Teddy flashes a picture of the strangled Mandy before walking away, offering it as a warning to Robert. Teddy and his mercenary group fail to abduct Robert on two occasions. Robert travels to visit his DIA colleague Susan and her husband, Brian Plummer. Until now, it was long assumed that Robert died in a bombing incident long ago. He asks for Susan's help in identifying Teddy. She informs him of Pushkin's operation and that Teddy's real name is Nikolai Ichenko, a Spetsnaz operative turned Russian secret police agent. She also reveals that Nikolai murdered two of the Boston PD detectives and that one of them, Frank Masters, had not been heard from in days. Robert tracks Masters down and threatens him into helping take down one of Pushkin's money laundering warehouses. Masters and Pushkin's men are taken into custody when the police arrive and they find a note left by Robert to follow the money. He confronts Nikolai again, threatening to do more damage if he continues to pursue him. He later destroys two of Pushkin's oil tankers. In response, Nikolai abducts Robert's co-workers at the hardware store to force him to meet. To Nikolai's surprise, Robert skips the meeting with Nikolai and instead kills the men guarding the hostages. Nikolai arrives with his men whom Robert kills one by one with improvised weapons collected throughout the hardware store. As Nikolai is about to kill Ralphie, who stayed behind to help, Robert kills him with a nail gun. Three days later, Robert finds Pushkin at his Moscow mansion, killing all his guards and tricking Pushkin into electrocuting himself to death. Sometime later, following her recovery, Alina runs into Robert. She thanks him for the money he left her, describing how she started a new life. Inspired to continue helping others, Robert posts online ads as the equalizer. Second part of the movie tell us that Robert McCall still lives in Boston, 
where he works as a lift driver and assists the less fortunate with the help of his close friend and former DIA colleague, Susan Plummer. Robert travels to Istanbul to retrieve the nine-year-old daughter of a bookstore owner, Grace Breilich, who her abusive Turkish father kidnapped. He also helps Sam Rubinstein, an elderly Holocaust survivor looking for a painting of his sister who died in the Nazi death camps. One night, Robert picks up a young woman named Amy, who shows signs of having been drugged and assaulted. He takes Amy to the hospital before returning to the apartment, where he brutally beats the men who assaulted her. Robert returns home to find that his apartment's courtyard has been vandalized. He accepts an offer from Miles Whitaker, a troubled teen resident with artistic talent, to paint a mural on the walls. Susan and DIA officer Dave York, Robert's former partner, are called to investigate the murder-suicide of an agency affiliate and his wife in Brussels. At their hotel, Susan is accosted in her room and killed, ostensibly during a robbery. Robert determines that the expertly delivered fatal stab means that Susan was targeted and that the murder-suicide was staged, informing York of his findings. During one of his lift runs, Robert is attacked by an assassin posing as a passenger. Robert kills the man and retrieves his mobile phone, discovering York's number on the phone's call list. He confronts York at his home, and York admits that he became a mercenary after feeling used and discarded by the government, and confesses that he killed Susan, as she would have figured out that he was behind the Brussels killings. Robert leaves the house where the rest of Robert's former squad and York's current teammates, Kovac, Ari, and Resnick, are waiting. Robert promises to kill the entire team before departing. Resnick and Ari head to Susan's house to kill her husband, Brian, but Robert helps him escape. York and Kovac break into Robert's apartment where Miles is painting the walls. Monitoring the apartment via webcams, Robert directs Miles to a secret passage, then calls York, who leaves the apartment with Kovac. Miles emerges from hiding but is captured by York and Kovac as he exits the apartment. York deduces that Robert has gone to his seaside hometown, which has been evacuated as a hurricane approaches. Kovac, Ari, and Resnick begin searching the town in gale force winds, while York situates himself on the town's watchtower. Robert stealthily kills the team one by one, dispatching Kovac with a spear gun, Ari with knives, and Resnick in a flower explosion trap in Robert's wife's old bakery, set off by Resnick's own stun grenade. Now by himself, York reveals that he has Miles tied up in the trunk of his car and begins tauntingly shooting at it to lure Robert out. But Robert foils York's last on-target shot to the trunk by shooting the car's tires. After York gets knocked over by the intensifying storm winds, Robert confronts him atop the tower and stabs him dead with the former's knife. Back in Boston, Susan's information about Sam's painting helps Robert reunite Sam with his long-lost sister. Miles finishes painting the mural on the apartment complex's brick wall, returns to school, and focuses on his art. Having moved back into his old house, Robert looks out towards the calm sea. The end.